these comments that flow into things. I think it was, it was, it was, it was actually it was one of your clips and somebody, oh, was, somebody down there was saying, I hate plot, you know, <laughs> I want story. And that poor person obviously is not educated about these things because plot and story are the same bloody thing. They are, you, a story is plot, plot is story. Maybe we can get there in a minute or two. Uh, uh, but make those mistakes and that's just, that's just ignorance. You know, and you can get educated and you can learn the tools and how to use them. It is to be out there saying, I'm gonna create this beautiful, big, intricate thing and not know the pieces of it. It's like going to say, I'm going to create this big, beautiful house and I know absolutely nothing about cement, electrical cabling, uh, roofing shingles, uh, glass, or uh, you got to know all these things before you can build a house. And I believe the same is true for really good screenwriting. Um, for instance, I'll throw out some, some of the silly stuff, but useful, useful stuff. Did you know, for instance, that there are only four viable goals in all of narrative screenwriting? And those four. goals are, yeah. <laughs> Win, stop, escape, or retrieve. So, okay, you've got an idea for a character, your hero or heroine, great, you've got an idea. And they have, okay, now what is it they want? Well, they've got to have a goal to pursue, right? Well, it has to fall into the category of win, stop, escape, or retrieve. Now, these are big categories and there are many versions of each one, many permutations of each one. So it's not like it's that cut and dried, but it will appear to a lot of people like it's, that's too cut and dried for me. But the point is this, there's only those four because those four share something in common. They all provide a visible, physical, three-dimensional goal for a motion picture that will result in a physical uh, uh, climax and obligatory scene. It precludes the use of internal goals and that's one of the things people have to get over. An internal goal that's great and it is separate from what drives the movie. You need a physical, visible goal. Each one of those four goals has a finish line, a visible finish line. And a goal like, well, they want to feel better about themselves. That doesn't work on film. It just doesn't work. Uh, and that there are only four emotions. Mad, sad, glad, and scared. You haven't heard that one? No. <laughs> Again, there are, they, they are, you know, there's a lot of variations between mad, mad sad, uh, glad, and scared. There's many permutations and, and, and dimensions there. But the way they are useful is like this. If you are building, if you're outlining something, uh, a, a section, a particular section, here a goal sequence, or a particular scene, the thing is, the way you guarantee that it's going to have conflict and change in it, and change is one of the single most important, we could talk about that in a minute too, change is the power that makes screenplays either work or not work. You gotta quantify it, but it can be done wonderfully. That if the, if the hero, lead character, walks, stomps, jumps, falls into a scene, and they are either uh, mad, sad, glad, or scared, by the end of the scene, they have to be one of the others. If they're mad when they show up, they have to be scared when they walk away. Or if they're scared when they show up, they have to be glad when they walk away because that guarantees dramatic change within the scene. And it's a way of checking yourself because we read a whole lot of scenes which are just talk and they're the same, everything is the same at the end as, as it was at the beginning, and that is not a viable scene for visual storytelling. Things like that. They're, they're, do you know there are only 14 character categories no. in all of dramatic writing and all of narrative writing? You have to know the 14 categories and you have to know how they work and how they interrelate the puzzle pieces to create plot, how they advance, how they can advance a story. Um, I'm just curious. What? Sorry to interrupt, but what are the what are a few of the fourteen? Just for instance, oh. there, in other words, let me qualify. 
There are 14 character, character categories that advance and serve story. Story is a central character, hero or heroine, who undertakes to do something, physically do something, in order to achieve a visible physical goal by the end kind of stuff. Right? And in that pursuit, there are 14 other character categories who serve as either helpers or hinderers toward that hero. And they are, I mean, like, first of all, I mean, the main categories are, are, are hero and adversary. Ooh, adversary is much unsung and under underappreciated. The adversary is critical. And, 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 and the point, I mean, without, without conflict, you don't have a story. There is no story without conflict. That's just it, you know. So that adversary is key to the creating of conflict, and so it, it puts a lot of weight on who the adversary is. So you got hero, adversary. Then there is a mentor, a very wide and delicious category, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, goes uh, uh, back to Joe Campbell and, and the yeah. assessment of the, of, of the mythological approach stuff. There's some of those characters. I mean, he called the adversary uh, the shapeshifter, uh, that's some more specific usage. Yes, it's adversary. Shapeshifter is, is somebody who appears one thing on the outside and becomes something else. That is one kind of adversary, but not the only kind. So, mm -hmm. And then there's mentor. There's the love interest character. This is interesting, the love interest character. I really go into this in detail for folks. For some, I mean, the love interest character brings depth and humanity and, and, and helps, augments, and eases character growth forward for the central character. And it is the least used character category of all the grad students who pass through here. Interesting. Yeah, it really is. And I, I, it, it, I, I think it's the character, it gets too close to home. Maybe their experience, you know, in these things, emotional, sensual experience is highly limited or something what it is, something about it, but that is a key character in stories that work and you have a, a romance subplot, that love interest character. Whoa, wow. and it's done well. It's one of the most powerful things you can add to a story. And then there are helper follower allies and, and a sidekick. A sidekick is another category. Mm -hmm. Very specific function is played by the sidekick. Um, and, and others. There is the uh, adversary agent. See, there is one adversary. Adversary can only be one, one person, human being, or a personified thing, a monster that behaves like a human being and thinks like a human being, but, but one thing, one human being. But they can also have all kinds of adversary agents running around doing the bidding of the adversary. So in, in, let's say, Aaron Brockovich, they're fighting this, like, toxic tort or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the, the, the workers of the plant or, or of the, you know, are, are sort of the adversary agent because they're maybe not the ones totally calling the shots, but they're working for the people that are calling the shots. Yes. Okay. Except for the ones that turn to the good side, you know, <laughs> who jump over to the good people. And, and then there's a group of characters called gate guardians. And that's, I would put those people in the gate ca guardian category. Gate guardian is a character who, this is, this is from uh, Campbell and, and the mythological structure too. Gate guardian is a character who when first met by the hero, when first confronted by the hero, stops them, says, no, you cannot enter here. But once the hero finds a way to outsmart that gate guardian. It's never brute force. It's but when they outsmart them and find a way to get around them and continue their journey, after that, the gate guardian becomes an ally. Interesting. Okay. At first opposes and then assists. And a, and a few more. There's a few more in there too. But see, but the point is, all of these characters, there's only 14 that, that help you create a plot, that help move a story forward. And any other character that a particular writer wants to plot, you know, I really like this character. You know, they're kind of interesting and peppy and zippy and they talk funny and I like it. If they do not serve the story, if they do not help drive the plot forward, get rid of them, ax them, 
cut them, lose them, because they have to serve a function. 